Hi everyone, Mark Camparato, broker associate with the Kai's company. Uh, today's video, I'm going to be walking you through filling out an as-is contract for residential sale and purchase. Uh, so this video is going to be helpful for um, people selling by owner, uh, maybe a buyer that just wants to make an offer on a property, or even a new agent that wants to get familiar with the contract. So let's get started. Before we get to the first section, I wanted to explain something real quick. Uh, throughout the video, when I refer to a line number, these are the numbers that I'm talking about. When I say section numbers, these are the numbers I'm referring to. And the letters I refer to within those sections are these letters right here. Also, I always recommend consulting with an attorney before entering into a contract, especially if you're not being represented by a realtor. So section one of the contract, you just want to fill out the names of the seller or sellers as well as the buyer or buyers that will take part in the sale. Moving down, you'll want to put the property address and county. The property tax ID number as well as the legal description can be found on the property appraiser's website and you'll need to enter that as well. Looking at line 15 letter D, this is where you'll list things that will be included in the purchase. Some items are automatically placed on the contract, so if they're not included in the sale, be sure and cross them out. For example, if there are no window treatments, cross this item out. Otherwise, you might, you might have to put window treatments in before closing. As we go to line 27, section 2, this is where you're going to put the purchase price. We'll put $400,000 just for an example. Under letter A, you're going to put the dollar amount of escrow that will be deposited by the buyer. You also want to check uh, box 1 if the deposit is going to accompany the offer. Or box 2 if the deposit will be within a certain number of days. Usually 3 days from the effective date is standard. Line 33 is where you place the title information. Now every contract must have the title company's name, address, and phone number. Now line 36 letter B uh, can be left blank unless there's an additional deposit being offered. If so, you'd put the number of days and the amount. Letter C will be the amount financed. So you could put the dollar amount or the percentage. So if you're financing 80% of the sale, you'd put 80%. Or you could put 320000 in this spot as it would be 80% of... 400,000. Letter E, uh, this will be the remaining balance due from the buyer not including closing costs, prepaids, or promotions. So if the program doesn't do the math for you, you will take our example of 400,000 minus the financing amount of 80% or 320,000 minus the deposit amount of 5,000 and you'd be Left with a balance due at closing of 75000 Moving on to section 3. This is the section where the buyer gives a deadline for the offer to be accepted or countered by the seller. The date goes on letter A. And it also explains that if the deposit is provided along with the offer, that this deposit is going to be withdrawn and returned to the buyer if a contract is not agreed by this date. All right, letter B in this section explains that the effective date of the contract is set when the last person signs. Now, deadlines in the contract correspond to the effective date, so this is important to understand. Section 4 is where you're going to put your agreed-upon closing date. Now, let's briefly touch on Section 5 here. Uh, this section explains the automatic closing extension if the... Uh, Consumer Financial Protection Bureau requirements are not met. For example, if the buyer did not receive a closing disclosure three days prior to the closing date, this would trigger Section 5. Um, also, if a delay in closing due to an event or circumstance that is not in the control of the parties involved, uh, that would also trigger Section 5. For example, if there was a hurricane on closing day. Section 6 goes over occupancy and possession. Uh, 
So letter A explains that in a normal closing, the seller shall deliver the property to the buyer free of tenants, occupants, and future tenancies, meaning you can't sell me a property that has a lease on it without informing me about it. Uh, also at closing, the seller shall remove all personal items and trash from the property. And this is why we do a final walkthrough, just to make sure everything is in acceptable condition. Now, if a buyer is allowed occupancy before closing, um, this explains that the buyer assumes all risk of loss to the property from the date of occupancy and shall accept the property in its existing condition as of the time taking occupancy. So if the buyer moves in early and a water line breaks, they are responsible. Um, there are also risks for the seller as well, so this arrangement is never recommended for either party. Uh, moving on, letter B of section 6 explains that if the property is to be leased or has any occupancy agreements, the seller must disclose this information and give the buyer all written lease agreements within five days after the effective date of the contract. So after the buyer has received those documents, the buyer has five days after that to cancel the contract if they don't find the, the lease agreements acceptable. Section 7 goes over assignability of the contract. You're almost always going to want to check the last box, which is may not assign this contract. Uh, now, oftentimes, the buyer will want to put the property in the name of an LLC or other entity. So the second box may assign uh, but not be released from liability of this contract. Uh, that one can be used as well. Section 8 is the financing part of the contract. Um, obviously, if the buyer is paying cash... A is going to be your option, and then you're going to be done with this section. However, in most cases, uh, financing is going to be used in the purchase, so you'll check B. And then, um, you know, the contract is going to be contingent on the buyer obtaining loan approval. So, you know, there's going to be an appraisal of the property, and that has to satisfy the lender in order for them to provide financing for the buyer. So... 30 days is usually a standard time frame for loan approval. Then you want to check what type of loan you're receiving. Conventional, FHA, VA, or other. Then describe the mortgage. <clears throat> is the rate uh, fixed uh, or adjustable? And then what what's the initial interest rate? Um, now, I don't like to leave things blank, so I usually write, Priva or prevail, meaning the prevailing rate for the buyer. Uh, then the length of the loan, which is usually 30 years. Line 97 is the, uh, the time the buyer will have to make a loan application. So five days is an acceptable time, but the, you know, in my opinion, the buyer should have already done this if they're serious. Um, I would also call the buyer's lender and speak with them directly just to make sure everything is good. Um, line 106 uh, just says the buyer is going to keep the seller informed of the status of the loan um, and all related conditions. And they give the lender approval to disclose information regarding the status as well. Okay, so going down line 111. Um, this says the buyer will notify the seller once they obtain loan approval uh, before the expiration date. So if the buyer has not received loan approval but they feel they can and they just need more time, uh, they'll notify the seller of this as well prior to the loan approval um, expiration date. So line 115 uh, says if the buyer has made all good faith and diligent efforts to obtain a loan uh, but they can't, the buyer may deliver written notice of termination uh, of the contract prior to the loan approval period uh, expiration date. So as long as the buyer is not in default under the terms of the contract, they'll receive their deposit back. So line 120 says that if the buyer fails to deliver any written notice of loan approval one way or the other prior to the expiration date, 
then the buyer will move forward with the contract as though letter A had been checked. So that means no more financing contingency after that point. However, if the seller loses faith in the deal, they may decide to cancel the contract, but the escrow would be refunded to the buyer in most cases. Finally, line 126, uh, this states that if the buyer does provide a written notice of loan approval within the approved period um, and then fails to close, the deposit will be paid to the seller unless uh, one of these two things happen. So number one, if, if the failure to close is due to the seller default or inability to satisfy other contingencies of the contract, uh, for example, uh, the seller's purchase of another property fails to close. Um, at that point, the buyer can get out of the contract if they want. Uh, or number two, property-related conditions of the loan approval have not been met um, unless such conditions have been waived. So the seller must maintain the property as it was uh, when the contract was signed. Um, they, they can't let it deteriorate. Uh, so in these two cases, the buyer would receive the deposit back. And then the very last part of this section, you have letters C and D. So C is a separate form if the seller has an assumable mortgage. And then D is also a separate form for seller financing. These, uh, these are separate riders or forms that need to be attached to the contract. So moving on to section 9, which is closing costs, fees, and charges. Uh, letter A is a breakdown of the cost uh, to the seller, and letter B are costs to the buyer. The owner's policy and municipal lien search can be paid by the seller or the buyer or split. Um, and we'll go over that as we move to letter C. Title, in, title evidence and insurance. Um, I usually put 15 days, even if it's a cash deal, because you want a title search done sooner than later. Uh, so you know if there's any issues. Um, now line 168 and 172 give you the option to choose who pays for the two charges that we talked about above. Uh, the owner's policy and the municipal lien search. Um, as well as the title fees. So usually uh, whoever pays can pick the title company. Now it defaults to the seller if neither are checked. So make sure you select one. Um, if you want to have the buyer pay only title fees, but not title search and lien search, you can click the box on line 174. Uh, but outside of Miami-Dade or Broward, a uh, single I box or the double I box will usually be used. Now, letter D in this section talks about the survey being done at least five days prior to closing. Um, if you're in a flood zone, I would try and get this done sooner than later since the buyer may be required to get flood insurance, uh, which may be too expensive and then it kills the deal. And letter E uh, covers a home warranty, which usually costs around $500 for coverage of appliances for one year. If, uh, if any appliance breaks down, the company will try and fix the issue. Um, if they're unable to fix it, they will replace the item. So check buyer, seller, or NA if there will be no home warranty. Lastly for this section is letter F regarding special assessments. This has to do with special assessments imposed by the city. Uh, so if there are roads or sidewalks being put in, they will assess your neighborhood. Um, this has nothing to do with the association. Um, so if you want the seller to pay the entire assessment prior to the closing, you should check box B. Uh, if there are installment payments, uh, you'll need to check box A. On to section 10, disclosures. Uh, disclosures are pretty straightforward. Um, letter A is about rate on gas risks. Uh, letter B is permits. Uh, so if the seller is aware or has documentation of any permits that are not closed out, uh, they'll want to disclose this information. Um, these permits will become the responsibility of the buyer, whether the seller knows about them or not. So the buyer or buyer's uh, agent should do a permit search to check. Um, letter C talks about mold risks. Letter D talks about flood zone, elevation certificates, and... Uh, whether flood insurance is required. Um, 
Also, if the rating is below minimum flood elevation or is ineligible for flood insurance, uh, the buyer can cancel uh, within, say, 20 days or so. As we go down further, uh, you'll see the energy brochure on letter E. Uh, letter F is the lead-based paint disclosure. This is mandatory if your property was built before 1978. Uh, letter G is the Homeowners Association Disclosure. This uh, should be attached to the contract. Letter H, uh, is letter H is important for the buyer to understand. So the property taxes will be reassessed at a higher price uh, once the property changes ownership. Uh, so make sure if you're the buyer, you aren't going by the uh, seller's taxes. Uh, letter I is uh, for the sellers that are foreign person. Um, they need to understand that fifteen that a fifteen percent tax um, will be withheld from the seller's earnings um, in the sale. Uh, there are exceptions, but for the purposes of this video, uh, just understand that. Uh, finally, letter J is the seller's disclosure. Uh, this will be filled out by the seller to the best of their knowledge uh, and discloses any known facts that materially affect the value of the property. It also states that the seller extends no warranty or responsibility for any unknown issues with the property. Um, I, don't think f I don't think Florida requires this form, but most brokerages do. Um, so if you're the buyer uh, purchasing on your own, you, you may want to have the seller provide you with a uh, seller's disclosure. Section 11, property maintenance. So the seller must maintain the property and not let it go to uh, shambles after the effective date. Section 12, uh, the property inspection and right to cancel. Uh, letter A. Um, this gives the buyer at least 15 calendar days uh, if you leave it blank. Usually we do seven days um, after the effective date. Uh, this is called the inspection period. This allows for the property to be inspected for any defects or unacceptable conditions determined by the buyer. Now, if the buyer wishes to cancel within the inspection period, uh, they'll receive their deposit back and be released of all further obligations. Um, if the buyer can also request repairs or concessions to be made by the seller, uh, then the seller will have the option to agree to some or all of the requests and move forward. Um, or they can deny any or all requests uh, at that point, the buyer will have to decide if they wish to proceed with the property as is or cancel the contract. Um, at that point, if the buyer agrees to move forward with the property as is, they will be responsible for any repairs that may be required by the lender, uh, except for the seller's continuing maintenance requirement. Letter B goes over the walkthrough inspection. Uh, this is usually done the day before or the day of closing, uh, prior to the closing time. This is the last chance for the buyer to make sure everything is as it should be. Uh, the property has been sufficiently cleared out and the maintenance requirements have been met. Uh, if there are any issues that need to be resolved, closing may be delayed um, and a follow-up walkthrough may be required. Letter C is the seller assistance and cooperation in closing out of building permits. So this doesn't obligate the seller to close out permits or spend any money. <clears throat> it just says that the seller will cooperate by providing plans, documents, or any other information that will help resolve any permit issues. And letter D is for maintenance contracts or warranties. This says uh, the seller will assign them to the buyer um, if they want them. If the buyer doesn't want to continue payments for maintenance uh, or treatment plan, they can refuse. We are now on to section 13 that talks about the escrow agent. This just says that the escrow agent agrees to accept the funds, uh, deposit them promptly, and disperse them in accordance uh, with the terms and conditions of the contract. Uh, also, if there's a dispute over the funds, the escrow agent can hold the funds until a disbursement order or a final judgment of a court has been issued. Uh, 
Now, if there is litigation, the agent may also deposit the funds with the clerk of circuit court having uh, jurisdiction of the dispute. Section 14 is about professional advice and broker liability. For this section, obviously the bold print is the gist of it. Uh, basically, the buyer agrees to rely solely on the seller, professional inspectors, and governmental agencies uh, for the verification of property condition. Uh, also, square footage and facts that materially affect the property value and not to rely on the representations of the broker. Also, if the broker or agent recommends someone, uh, let's say an inspector, the agent or broker is not responsible for the inspector's actions or service. Uh, now, the broker or agent still must be careful of what they say or advice they give. Um, they can't give legal, tax, or any other specialized advice related to the transaction because it's outside of their scope of practice. Section 15 deals with the default of the buyer or seller. Uh, under this section, letter A, if the buyer defaults or does not perform their obligations under the contract, the seller has the right to try and force the buyer to perform, uh, or the more likely resolution, uh, they will take the escrow money. Um, some brokerages uh, can also take a portion of the escrow. Um, our company doesn't, but just be aware. Letter B, if the seller defaults or does not perform their obligations under this contract, the buyer receives their escrow deposit back, um, and they can also sue for damages. Section 16 deals with dispute resolution. Uh, so if there's a question or unresolved controversy relating to the contract, um, where both parties are making a claim on the escrow deposit, this will be the process. Uh, letter A says the buyer and seller uh, have 10 days to resolve the matter themselves or it goes to mediation. After that, letter B um, says after mediation, if the issue is not resolved, it can be taken to the court. Uh, section 17, attorney fees and cost. Uh, this says the buyer and seller will split any mediation fees incurred. Uh, they will be responsible for paying their own legal fees, costs, and expenses as well. If there is litigation, the prevailing party can seek to recover legal fees and costs from the non-prevailing party. Section 18, this is the longest section uh, and the majority of the contract, so I'll try and summarize A through Z as quickly as possible. Um, under letter A, line 371, is the title evidence. Uh, so within the agreed time period, a title search will be done. Um, this makes sure the property is zoned correctly and can be used for residential purposes. Also that the seller is actually the owner and they also check for any issues that need to be corrected in order to move forward and receive title commitment. Uh, title commitment is when the buyer receives an owner's policy of title insurance that will be issued to the buyer, uh, which ensures the buyer's marketable title to real property. Line 386, uh, the double I, is title examination. So if there are any issues that need to be resolved in the title commitment that, the, that render the uh, property unmarketable, uh, the buyer has five days after receiving title commitment to notify the seller in writing. Uh, the seller will have a 30-day cure period to remove any defects, and basically, um, if the seller fails to cure the defects, the buyer can extend the cure period, uh, accept the title with the defects, or they can cancel the contract and receive the deposit back. Um, you want to try and get title commitment as soon as possible so you have time to deal with uh, any issues. Going down to letter B, the survey. Uh, again, you want to do this as soon as possible to deal with any encroachment issues or violations that will constitute a title defect. Letter C, um, this says that there aren't any obstructions that prevent access to and from the property. Letter D, 
is lease information. Uh, we touched on this earlier in the contract. Uh, the seller shall provide all lease information and documents to the buyer at least 10 days prior to closing. If the buyer uh, finds the lease agreements unacceptable, they can uh, cancel the contract within five days of receiving these documents. Uh, so it would benefit the seller to provide these documents as soon as possible. Letter E, the seller will provide a lien affidavit attesting that there are no liens uh, on the property. Um, letter F, uh, time is of the essence. So this means uh, that deadlines are set and they must be uh, met in order to perform. Um, Keep in mind that some deadlines are calendar days, uh, such as inspection periods, uh, and some deadlines are business days, uh, such as escrow deadline. So knowing which is which uh, is pretty important. Letter G is force majeure. Uh, so any acts of God, natural disasters, wars, pandemics, etc., um, pretty much anything outside of anyone's control that delays closing then the closing will automatically be extended for up to seven days after the event, uh, but not beyond 30 days. After that, either party may cancel the contract. Letter H, the seller will convey a marketable title to the buyer. Letter I, line 459 with the little i, uh, talks about the location for closing. This takes place in the county of the property and at the office of the closing agent unless agreed otherwise by both parties. Uh, mail, electronic, or mobile notaries can also be used. Line 464 with the double I. Uh, there are certain closing documents the seller must execute and deliver and then there are certain documents that the buyer must execute and deliver. Line 469 with the triple I is FinCEN GTO reporting obligation. So this has to do with large cash transactions. Um, so if the closing agent is required to comply with this obligation, then the buyer must provide essential information and documentation to the closing agent. Line 475 with the IV uh, is the procedure. Once all funds are collected by the title company, the deed is recorded and closing has taken place. Letter J, if there are any title issues, uh, this explains the closing procedures. Letter K talks about prorations and credits. Uh, so some things are prepaid a month in advance or sometimes a year in advance, and some things are paid in arrears. Um, so. Say the seller paid an HOA on the first of the month and the closing is in the middle of the month. The seller would be credited a proration for the remainder of the month. Um, another example are property taxes that are paid at the end of the year. So the seller would owe their portion of taxes from the beginning of the year until the closing date, uh, which would be credited to the buyer and then the buyer would pay the taxes at the end of the year. Letter L. The seller will make the property readily available for the buyers to conduct their due diligence. Letter M is uh, if the property is damaged before closing, uh, say there's a fire, and the cost is less than 1.5% of the purchase price, the seller is obligated to repair the damage. Uh, if the repairs are not completed before closing, the money will be escrowed. Um, if the clo if the cost of the repairs exceed 1.5% of the purchase price, the buyer can elect to take the property as is, um, together with the 1.5%, or they can elect to cancel and receive their escrow deposit back. Letter N uh, says if the seller or buyer enter into a like-kind exchange, that they agree to cooperate and provide documentation necessary for the exchange. Letter O says all notices must be in writing and made uh, by mail, fax, personal delivery, or email. Um, electronic signatures are also permitted as well. Letter P, any modifications to the contract must be agreed upon by uh, both parties in writing. Letter Q, uh, waivers. So if the buyer or seller does not insist on their rights in the contract, then essentially they waive their rights.
uh, letter R, riders and addendums. Um, these are going to override provisions in the contract that conflict. Uh, so, for example, if a change is made to the closing date on an addendum uh, that's signed by both parties, this would override the closing date on the contract. Addendums always trump uh, the contract. Uh, letter S uh, says the closing agent may delay the disbursement of funds and delivery of closing documents until the amounts are collected in the agent's account. Letter T is reserved for whoever put that there because nobody knows what it means. Uh, letter U, all resolutions of disputes will take place in the county where the real property is located. Letter V goes over FERPTA. Um, so if the seller is a foreign national, the buyer is required to withhold 15% of the amount realized by the seller on the transfer and give the amount to the IRS. So the buyer can be held responsible for the tax if it's not done correctly. So read over this and make sure it's done right um, if you're in this situation. Letter W is another reserve spot for who knows what. Um, letter X is self-explanatory. Um, just keep in mind that it doesn't relieve the seller's obligations to being truthful on the seller's disclosure. Finally, to addenda and additional terms, um, section 19. Uh, so it's important that if you check any of these boxes, um, you use the coinciding form and fill it out completely so the contract is valid. Section 20 is additional terms. Uh, so anything you want to add to the contract or make clear to all parties would go here. All right, so again, if uh, any of the contract is not fully understood, seek the advice from an attorney. Um, and last but not least, sign and date. Fill out your address or the address of your client. Uh, if you're an agent filling this out, put your name and the name of your brokerage, um, as well as a cooperating agent and brokerage uh, that they work with. Um, now that just about does it, uh, but please make sure that at the at bottom of every page uh, you have your initials, uh, both parties. Um, also, if the, any changes are made to the contract, both parties must initial next to the change that is made or the contract will not be recognized. Um, and if there's too many changes or back and forth uh, counter offers that are made, uh, you may want to just settle on all the terms and conditions and then redo a clean new contract. All right, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear from you. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more information and other videos. Thanks. Bye.